So the next thing, uh, we should look at is uh, uh, transmission line inductances. So let's take a balanced uh, a geometry like this here as shown here where the distance between any two conductors is D and R is the radius of uh, any of these conductors. <coughs> and uh, under balanced conditions, uh, these currents uh, would add up to zero as shown here. IA plus IB plus IC is zero. So how do we calculate uh, the, the per phase inductance of this transmission line? For example, L sub A. Well, we'll apply the basic uh, uh, definition of inductance, which is flux linkage uh, divided by the current in that phase. So lambda A uh, divided by I sub A. But this lambda A total is made up of uh, three uh, subcomponents here. <coughs> One is the flux linkage due to uh, its own current, plus the flux linkage in phase A due to B, and flux linkage in A due to C over here. So we will apply a superposition to, to calculate these flux linkages, okay? So first, uh, let's uh, obtain uh, lambda A due to the current in itself, okay? So we apply, uh, we apply Ampere's law, and we can find the, uh, the field intensity here and the flux density, and then we integrate that and we, you know, we have to go all the way to infinity, and we get this result over here, okay? So I'll not go through it in detail. It's all in the textbook. I just want to, you know, establish a framework here to analyze uh, these things here. <coughs> the other thing we will look at is uh, uh, flux linkage in phase A due to other currents. So if you look at the current in phase B uh, first, and then we look at phase C, so lambda A due to current in phase B, uh, we can calculate this uh, to be uh, between D and infinity here. So we get this expression here. D is the separation. And similarly for uh, flux linkage in phase A due to current in phase C is given here. So what we have to do now is to add these three up because we are applying superposition here, right? <coughs> so when we add these three up, and, uh, and making use of the fact that these three currents add up to zero under balanced uh, conditions, uh, we find that lambda A total is given by this expression, and if you divide this by I sub A, we get the self-inductance for any of the three phases, okay, per phase. So this is the self-inductance uh, under uh, the configuration where these three conductors are in, uh, you know, the separation is uh, distance is balanced, okay? But if uh, that is not the case, then we can make use of so-called geometric mean distance to calculate D as, the, uh, as given by this expression over here, okay? So this gives, gives us a pretty, uh, pretty good uh, approximation even if uh, we are not dealing with a balanced geometry for these conductors here. And uh, the other thing we have to look at is uh, the effect of bundling uh, on uh, inductance because what we did earlier was to assume that there's only one conductor per phase, okay? But we talked about bundling. So what bundling does, it, it effectively lowers the inductance, okay? So if you have a three-conductor bundle, uh, 18 inches apart as we talked about, then it'll be about 0.7 times what we have calculated earlier for uh, one conductor per uh, phase, whereas it'll be 0.8 times that if you have a two conductor bundle. But all these things can be calculated uh, with uh, great care uh, using a computer program like EMTDC that we will talk about. <coughs> uh, the other thing we, we, we have to recognize is that when you have these three conductors, uh, there are capacitances between them, okay? So that's another thing we have to calculate, and here we'll make use of this, uh, elect you know, basic concept of electric field. Uh, so if you put a charge here on this conductor here, Q, uh, so there's a potential between point 0.1 and point 0.2, and that's given by this expression over here. There's an electric field, and then you can integrate that field, and you get this expression here. And uh, I'll not go through the details of that, 
Uh, it's all pretty well laid out in the book. <coughs> There's no point going over here. And again, assuming a balanced geometry as shown here, and uh, which uh, with a separation of d and the radius r here, uh, and if you want to model the capacitances associated with these three uh, in this uh, type of Y arrangement here, where this is a hypothetical neutral here, and uh, with respect to each phase to the neutral there's a capacitance C, this capacitance can be calculated by this expression here. And uh, <coughs> once again, if we don't have a balanced geometry, we can calculate the geometric mean distance, and that can be calculated uh, using this expression here. So uh, once again, we have to talk about uh, the effect on these shunt capacitances due to bundling. And this time, the effect is to make these capacitances go up. Uh, by a factor of 1.4, if you have a three-conductor bundle, and by a factor of 1.25, if you have a two-conductor bundle here. Okay. <clears throat> so here are some uh, typical values that we see. Uh, I'm not sure why this line is not showing up here. Let me just draw it, okay? And it shows that, uh, uh, you know, at 230 kV, for example, the resistance, uh, typical resistance per uh, kilometer, uh, omega L per kilometer, and omega C in micro moles, the symbol didn't show up uh, per kilometer over here, omega C here. And similarly, it's shown for, tip these are typical values, for different line voltages. And they are different because when you have higher voltages, you will have higher conduct uh, towers and you will have larger separation between the conductors. Okay, so these values are not constant. Uh, they do vary uh, based on the voltages for which the transmission line is designed. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, so, uh, you know, I have been talking about the fact that uh, you know, these things can be calculated very accurately by using a program like EMTDC. And that's what we use in our uh, laboratory as uh, one of the exercises, which is to calculate <coughs> uh, these parameters here. And uh, what you have to do is uh, specify what type of conductor you're using, what is the tower geometry, that is, what is the separation between the conductors, and uh, if you have ground wires, you can show them too, and uh, including all those effects, it will calculate for you the transmission line parameters. Okay, and in fact, those transmission line parameters may also be frequency dependent. Here we have not talked about frequency dependency here, but uh, if you are trying to do a study of uh, you know switching transients on a transmission line, then you have to talk, worry about frequency dependence, and that can be included. Uh, and calculated using these programs here. So these programs are very sophisticated, and uh, <coughs> the student version that we have uh, is free, and that uh, comes with this uh, reference textbook, and we use that in our laboratory. 